Hi, my name is Stephanie and this is Chico. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to give sub Q fluids. Sometimes in cats and dogs, your veterinarian might um, send you home with fluids that you have to give at home. Um, and it's subcutaneous, which is underneath the skin. So today I'm gonna to show you a step-by-step -step on how to do that. Um, Chico's a little dehydrated, so we're just gonna do it in the clinic. Um, the owner doesn't have to do it at home for right now. So this is a bag of fluids. Um, we're gonna do, it's lactated ringer, so I like to get everything together before starting fluids. Um, and then this is a line that the uh, veterinarian will send home with you, and this is gonna hook up to the fluids. And then of course, the scary part is the needle, but I'll show you and hopefully we'll ease this so it's less scary for you at home. There are different types of uh, fluids, so some are um, open differently, um, and the port might look a little bit different, so if you have any questions, just call your doctor. So this is a liter bag, so it's a thousand mils of fluid. Um, so depending on how much the veterinarian wants you to give your animal will depend on um, marking down. So in this bag, from here to here is 100, and from here to here is 100. Each line is 100. So Chico's going to get 200, so we're gonna go down to this line right here. Now it's time to hook up the line. So on here, there will be a little spike port. You're going to open that up, and then your bag will have, a, there's a couple different openings, but this one, you take off the blue rubber, and you're going to stick this directly into the bag, straight down, so it doesn't go through the side. And then you are going to let it go through the line so there's not any air bubbles. So you could do this in a bucket or over a sink or anything like that. And then when it goes down through the line, there are shut up valves right here. All right, let me show you. Right here's one of them. And then right here, you roll this one and it shuts it off completely. If you're at home, I would say have, um, try to hook something up so it can be hanging so it's a little easier for you. So I have this, but some people will um, construct something or like a coat hanger or a coat rack. Um, that way it's going to be easier because you want the flow to be able to go down through the line. And now is the next part with the needle. Good job. There's a little safety cap on here. And then the needle, you just take off. You hook the two together and then this wind straight through, and that's shut. Now, depending on the kitty, Chico's really good for things. Sometimes you might have to wrap them um, into like a little kitty burrito where just a little bit of their skin, because this is the area that we need to get a hold of is the skin, because we're actually gonna go underneath the skin. Um, so when you're doing it, you're going to pull up on the looser area of skin, which I find is usually on the back of the neck, and you make like a little tent, and right here, as you can see my finger goes in, that's where I'm actually going to put the needle through. So it's a tent, I make a tent with that. Um, and it might take a couple tries sometimes, um, or if you go through and there's a little bit of leaking, you just need to pull back. So I like to, to distract them. Sometimes if they're eating well, you can give them some treats to distract them. So I do bevel side up, so the portion of the needle that's angled down, that's where I'm going to go in at. So I pick up, and I just go straight in. And I take off the safety valves and then you can squeeze the bag. Now, how, how would you know once you have this in here? 
like that the fluids are going properly for one. Um, I'm not getting any leaking, so that for sure. And two, you'll start to feel a little bubble of the fluids forming, which is normal. As long as it doesn't get too tight, sometimes if there's a lot of fluids you're doing, you might have to switch areas. But as long as it's not getting too tight, sometimes, you know, if it's loose, then it's good. And as long as it's flowing. This shows that it's flowing. And you can use a pretty good amount of pressure on it. So at the top of the bag, just keep squeezing until you get down to that 200. A lot of times it's easier to have two people. Not every patient is gonna be as good as Chico. So you might need an additional hand um, and they could take and they could squeeze this. The other thing that you could maybe get from your veterinarian is it's called a slam bag or a pressure infusion bag. And you take this and you hook it up around the bag and you just squeeze it and it does the pressure on its own. So when you're done with fluids, you're going to go ahead and close off. Good job. And then you just take where you have your needle, you put your finger over it, and you pull out gently. And then you, that. Um, so he's got a nice little lump. It's not too hard. He was an amazing patient. You're going to have to uh, use a new needle every time, and you need a sharps container to uh, dispose these of. And then afterwards, if they're allowed to, my favorite thing is make sure that you reward a cat for being good or a dog. Make sure you give them a treat if they're allowed to have one. If you have any other questions, just give us a call. Thanks.